Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nara and here we're discussing all things astrology, spirituality, and this video is about Pisces Sun rising or Neptune in the first house. So without further ado, let's get started. So we know that zodiac sign of cancer, sorry, Pisces, sorry. <laughs> we know that zodiac sign of Pisces belongs to the water element along with Cancer and Scorpio. And I already covered Cancer and Scorpio. However, the zodiac signs within each element will still differ from one another regardless of the fact that they are uh, represented by one theme, which is element, right? So, for instance, Cancer is ruled by Moon, right? And Moon changes signs pretty much every other night or every two nights. And it is directly impacting Cancers and that's why uh, their focus is being, you know, taken off from a certain area and being put, being, being put on on a different area of life based on that Moon transit, right? And that's why Cancers can be very unpredictable, emotionally speaking. So one day they are emotional, the next day they're cold-hearted, the next day they're something else, right? Or something else bothers them and they completely forget whatever happened two days ago. So it can be Cancer, and Cancer is also a cardinal mode, uh, belongs to the cardinal mode along with Capricorn, Aries, and Libra. So what does it mean? It means that they are very fast to change their approach, their behavior, their assumptions, and stuff like that, right? Okay, and then we have Scorpio, which is ruled by Pluto, right? And Scorpio uh, is very emotional, but, but the emotions that Scorpio has, has a very different energy. It's a very intense because Scorpio is the fire sign out of water signs, okay? It's very passionate and very energetic. Even when Scorpio just stands still and doesn't say or do anything, their energy is very, very intense and it will be felt by other people. And when it comes to Scorpio, Scorpios usually tend to fixate on a certain object or a person. Uh, and Scorpios usually, you know, associate that intense feeling with the object or a person uh, for pretty much their entire life, especially if somebody betrayed them or did something wrong to them they always associate that intense feeling with the object that or person who created that internal turmoil, right? And they will never let go of that. So that Scorpio, they do have feelings. They're not emotional. I wouldn't say they're emotional. They just have intense feelings about things. And they usually like to keep it secret, okay? But when it comes to Pisces, it is emotional, but it is ruled by Neptune, which is the underwater god, okay? It's, and actually, Pluto is also the underwater water god, but they're very different in nature, Pluto and Neptune. So, Neptune is the planet that likes to dissolve with the environment. It likes to dissolve with atmosphere, with people, with other, with other objects, with other people's feelings, okay? And it likes to reach higher states in consciousness, right? Um, so that's why Pisces is emotional, but they're, they're very, very opposite of Scorpio. So we know that Scorpio has intense feelings, jealousy, possessiveness, and stuff like that. And they usually associate it associate that intense feeling with a certain situation, event, person, object. But when it comes to Pisces, because of that Neptune dreamy nature, right? Uh, dissolving with, with other people and even dissolving the boundaries between oneself and other people, right? When Pisces, let's say, gets betrayed or they have an intense emotion about something, they will not be like a Scorpio, uh, you know, stick to that feeling and never let go of it. They might be betrayed today, but just because of that Neptune nature that makes them dissolve with the environment and feelings of other people and things, right? They quickly uh, forget who initiated that betrayal even, and they get lost in other other things, in other feelings, in other emotions, and at the end of the day, they can't even understand why they were feeling the way they were feeling initially. 
so that's the nature of pisces it's very vague it's not um straightforward like cancer or scorpio right okay this has happened this is what you've done and i'm mad at you no with pisces it's not the same with pisces it's like yeah i'm mad at you but they're quickly to let go because of that neptune nature which makes them kind of imagine and visualize things and kind of escape the reality during the day a lot and uh, once they lose that sense of reality right they get into that those god godly states or they start like feeling other vibrations of other people and they're quickly uh you know shifting the initial feeling that they had to the feeling that they are dissolving with if that makes any sense and also for pisces people it's really really important to keep your own boundaries and which we're going to talk about in a little bit because it, because Neptune can make you selfless, um, not having identity, and therefore basically being very, very influenced by your environment and other people and doing what they want you to do and not what you want to do by yourself. Okay, just something I'm going to talk about, which is very, very, it's an important, important message for Pisces people. But Pisces uh, belongs to the 12th house. And what is 12th house? 12th house is the last house, first of all. And Pisces is a very last zodiac, uh, right? We have, it's the 12th zodiac. And uh, the 12th house relates to spirituality, religion, godly states, things that are not of this earth, things that cannot be grasped but can only be felt, if that makes any sense. You know, you can feel the vibrations sometimes, overwhelming vibrations, feelings, emotions, right? But you can't really pinpoint or pin down what exactly you're feeling right now. So that's Pisces. And sometimes they can get lost in all other people's problems and emotions and dramas and take them for their own, okay? Because that 12th house, 12th house is getting lost, okay? Getting lost, godly states. And Pisces, as well as Neptune and the 12th house is the least understandable uh, zodiac sign, house, and planet in the entire astrology. So we're struggling to explain the 12th house a lot because it has so many different interpretations and not just one or two, but it can be so many things. The same with Pisces. You can't really explain the Pisces zodiac sign because they are changing so much because of that Neptune nature, right? And you never know what kind of dream they're being taken towards and what fantasy they're living currently because they always escape the reality. Okay, and then Neptune is a dream, a dream planet. It's really hard to understand how Neptune works, but I'll try my best by bringing up the mythical story about Neptune. So Neptune represents God, something, it's karmic. And all actually water signs and the water planets are karmic, okay? And water houses as well. So what does it mean? Karmic, not in a sense that, oh, you know, you did something bad and, you know, you'll have to, you know, pay off your karma. Not in this way. It's mostly, you know, let's say, uh, I have Neptune in the fourth house, which is home and family. And then my Pisces is in the sixth house with Saturn. So what does it mean? Those two houses are interconnected in my personal chart. And I feel as if it's my karmic obligation in front of God to take care of my parents, if that makes sense. Or it's my karmic obligation to take care of my pet. So that kind of karma I'm speaking of, okay? It's, it's the karma that I've been giving to you by the universe or God to fulfill a certain thing by putting your ego aside and uh, devoting yourself to a certain cause. And you can find that out by finding your Neptune placement, the house placement, and that's how you can find out in what area of your life 
you feel this way you will have this karma this karmic obligation to put your ego aside or overcome your ego because that's actually uh, helping your growth and purpose on this earth because we are here to realize the fact that ego is not our real identity and the house with neptune will show you that you know if you are willing to uh, you know, overcome your ego because you're reacting too much, you have a lot of emotional triggers and you don't like that and you just want to, you know, ne um, control better your reactions. But in order for us to control better our emotions and reactions, we need to understand where they're stemming from, right? And that will require therapy, that will require work. Uh, and by knowing in what area of your life your Neptune is and Pisces, you can quickly find that out and, you know, devote to God in those areas and you'll find yourself being very happy. Okay, just just something I wanted to talk about. Um, but but with Pisces, right, like I said, they have this the unfocused emotions. Sometimes they don't even know where they're coming from, but they do have this urge to go along with those emotions and to pay extra attention to them. So I mentioned in my last video of Cancer that, um, or Virgo, I believe it was, um, for instance, if Pisces is trying to do get a task done or a certain work done and you know, out of nowhere, a thought pops up that triggers them emotionally in some way, or someone calls and says something that happened to them, which is, you know, of emotional nature. Uh, Pisces would literally, you know, put off the work, pay attention to their inner state, deal with that, and once it's done, only then get back to work. Because unless they do that, they're unable to focus or they can still keep going, but the work won't be done well because of that dreamy nature, because now they're taking off of the reality, which is work, and being taken into the emotional world, sometimes not even there. So Pisces gotta be very, very careful. And yeah, the 12th house is spirituality, God, it's uh, mental institutions, it's prisons, it's the isolation house, it's, it's where, there's nobody, it's only you and your soul kind of thing, okay? It's the meditations, the yoga, uh, the ashrams, you know, mosques, churches, it's all of that stuff, right? Where you connect with your soul uh, and you connect with God. But um, speaking of Neptune, I do wanna talk about Neptune a little bit more. So Neptune, the mythical story of Neptune, Neptune actually had a beef with Saturn, rather the other way around. Saturn had a beef with Neptune because Neptune wanted to worship God and pretty much give everything away to God and dissolve the boundaries between things, dissolve the boundaries between people. Uh, immerse in their realities, immerse in those feeling states. And, you know, sometimes like Pisces feels emotions that are not clear. They just feel like an ocean of emotion and they don't even know what's going on inside. So Saturn wanted to basically kill, th throw off the water Neptune because Neptune was the underwater god, right? And Saturn didn't like Neptune because he wanted to worship. And, but Saturn is the ego, right? But Neptune is the soul. So ego basically went against the soul and we have that happen to us pretty much on a daily basis. Our logic is beefing with our soul, with our heart. Mind say one thing, soul says another thing and we're in conflict, right? So we want one thing, but we need another thing type of thing. So that's all Neptune and Saturn and Sun as well. So they had a beef and Saturn tried to kick out of the ocean uh, Neptune, but Jupiter, God, helped Neptune. It basically saved Neptune, right? And sur Neptune survived. Um, also, so what does it mean for our personal charts? It might mean in our personal charts that whatever house you have Neptune in, you will also try to find in that area of your life some savior, okay? Somebody to save you, somebody to take responsibility for you, somebody to 
help you out in some way somebody to take off the bat you know the baggage from your shoulders so we might in the neptune house expect a savior such as uh, jupiter because remember all of those mythical stories they do mean a lot of things in our personal charts so since jupiter helped uh neptune to be saved from saturn in our personal chart astrology whatever neptune is placed in whatever area of our lives we might unconsciously too not even consciously seek out some help from other people because we might feel helpless on our own in those areas so just keep that in mind uh, and we might and might not find you know the savior in those areas also uh again like i said right the neptune the saturn wanted to kick out neptune but but uh neptune also based on the mythical story had two different reactions from universe whenever uh neptune showed or projected emotions okay so whenever uh so at certain times when neptune projected emotions the waters the ocean because it's an underwater god right the waters responded peacefully and greatly you know like by giving even more uh, inspiration to feel those emotional states yet at other times when Neptune showed their emotions his or her emotions right the ocean did not respond well it actually gave storm so what does it mean it means in our personal life wherever Neptune house whatever whatever wherever Neptune planet is placed in whatever house we might experience experience ups and downs uh in the way we express ourselves actually the reaction to our expression let me put it this way so for instance sometimes your expressions might be taken very you know my my by might be welcomed by other people and at other times they might be rejected by other people okay so that's the mythical story interpretation for our personal charts of the neptune um, also, the uh, Neptune people, especially Neptune in the first house and, or Pisces rising, right? Uh, they might not have a very selfish nature like an Aries or Leo or even Sag, well, Sag, yeah, or Gemini. Um, they might not have selfish nature at all. They might not even have their own identity established. And that's why they might basically uh, get lost in other people's business not have their own thing or wander in life aimlessly not having a goal because of that neptune dreamy nature right they can't focus on strategies like earth science can they can't focus on strategies to strategize their life or strategize find out their purpose in life and decide what they want to do and set up a plan and follow it it's really hard for Neptune or Pisces rising people. Um, that's why they they can you know dissolve themselves with other people, and also they're very good at uh, showing other people what's going on inside of them. If that makes any sense, they're not actually showing expressing themselves, but rather projecting the inner world of the other person. Okay, I know that we all do that. Don't get me wrong. We all do that. We all project, we all reflect other people's emotional world, right? In relationships. I mean, I learned that a long time ago when I was doing therapy and shadow work because I'm a Libra rising, okay? And I'm ruled by Venus. And Venus, Neptune, and Moon, they all are passive planets, okay? And they always... Um, they they have a tendency to dissolve okay they have a tendency but obviously neptune has more tendency to dissolve with other things and other people but still venus is also you know doing something for other people and then expecting something in return right so it's very similar in passivity and moon too moon reflects other people's emotional world just like neptune and also other people's uh uh, patterns of behavior other people's uh true character and cancer also projects their own uh patterns of behavior onto other people honestly because they can't recognize in themselves but when it comes to neptune right neptune 
not only that it just reflects or dissolves in other people it literally doesn't have the identity a lot of the times pisces rising people or neptune in the first they do not have identity and that's why they cons they may construct a false identity based on the environment and what, what environment wants because they are very easy to um mule themselves you know to 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 bend themselves so that they look just like you know the environment and get accepted by the environment or certain people okay that's something something very very important to keep in mind um marilyn monroe she had neptune in the first but she was a leo rising and she had pisces in the eighth house and we know that she literally changed her identity based on uh whatever was appealing at a time right and she changed her identity, her name. Yes, she she represented the cult, which was sexy feminism, right? At a time, it was very new, and it was very, very um, chaotic, really. You know, like a lot of people were shocked, and that's when that Aquarius age really started, where people started to get rebellious and to set new trends and that was the 60s and 50s right where marilyn monroe uh started a trend but she was a neptune first house person and she literally just to get the fame and love from other people she changed herself completely her name her looks but when she was at home by herself what she was doing she was drinking and doing drugs right I don't know about drugs really, but she was definitely drinking and smoking. Two people in the first house, right? These people might have had a very awkward relationship with their mother. And here it's very, very, very important to pay attention to that, especially if you're a parent and know, believe in astrology and happen to, you know, have your child's chart. If your child has Neptune in the first house or close to the ascending, that would mean that you as a mother have to take extra care of your child and show them that they have their own identity outside of you. Because what happens with these people, right? Mothers, they're very attached to mothers and sometimes they don't know the difference between them and a mother, okay? And if a mother doesn't know how that Neptune first house thing works, a child might literally not have a self, like not have self, not have identity at all, and literally dissolve itself with the mother. However, when that person becomes an adult and the mother is not around anymore, they might do that with other people. So they don't have an identity, but they will keep finding people who will resemble their mother and they will try to basically dissolve with that person now because you know they did done that when they were kids but now that mother is not around maybe she passed away maybe they don't she just they don't live together anymore whatever right and that neptune first house person or pisces rising might find somebody else like that that resembles them of their mother and literally try to dissolve with them because they don't have that identity but they need to survive in life and and since childhood they got acquired that belief that mother is the only one i can who will basically allow me to survive in this life and in order for me to do that i need to dissolve my own self with her and also mother needs to with these children like that with with these kinds of placements they need to develop self-identity for their child to you know find their own passions without you inserting anything you know because like neptune first house house people if they don't get enough love from their mothers they will go and try to get it elsewhere and try to basically act the same way towards other people the same way they acted towards their mothers when they were children you know and that's very traumatic and a lot of times it doesn't work like that and then you will just only get the reflection back to you from that person that you ain't got no identity and that you need to do the shadow work but here's the thing neptune is a dreamy planet right it makes you go from like one state to another and forget about your intentions really so you might get into also drinking 
uh, Pisces, Sun, Rising, Neptune, um, they have a drinking problem because they, they want to escape those harsh realities in life and they start um, getting substances, you know, substance abuse, drunk, uh, drugs or whatever. It's very, 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 very consistent with Pisces people. And um, you gotta be careful with that because that's gonna create even more problems. And yeah, then you just won't be able to see yourself in a strong light and see yourself as a confident and strong individual and not even have any reason as to why to do a shadow work or to do a therapy, okay, to get help. So just be aware of that because Pisces do have, um, you know, substance abuse problem if that's you, right? Um, but Neptune obviously has good positive, um, you know, not traits, but positive aspects to it, uh, which can manifest in your life as well. Neptune is very artistic. Pisces are very artistic. So let's say whenever you, because I'm doing psychology, I'm a therapy therapist in a way and an astrologer. Uh, that's why I'm just, you know, trying to talk about the traumas uh, because, trust me, astrology does make sense when you put it in a psychological uh, framework. So, for example, right, let's say that um, you get a bunch of feelings, a bunch of emotions, and you sometimes don't even know what's going on. And or you get a bunch of feelings and you feel some type of way and now you can't focus on anything right and then you start drinking or smoking just to not feel this way right but it turns out even worse so instead of doing that it's best for you guys to put that into the right use and create something artistic out of it because trust me even if you have bad emotions and i do that all the time and i'm a content creator and when I have like jealous emotions, emotions of jealousy or aggression, instead of, you know, feeling this way, I divert, direct that energy onto my creative pursuits and, you know, I create something outstanding in the end, you know? So instead of drinking or doing that, try to divert it, direct it toward your creative pursuits, create something, even if it's like, a sad emotion create something sad which other people will appreciate you don't know how even those emotions that you're trying to escape can actually inspire you to create something that may not even have been created before and it will be so original so pisces are very very artistic and that's something to keep in mind and that's something to always 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 do especially when you have those emotions and pisces do have emotions pretty much all day long so whenever you feel intense just go and produce something go do direct it towards your artistic abilities otherwise it'll be really hard for you to deal with them you know on your own um but yeah, I feel like I've covered pretty much everything for Neptune, first house people, and Pisces rising, and sun as well. All right, guys, I feel like I've covered pretty much everything in this video. I wanted to say, obviously, there is more. It's Pisces. You can never understand Pisces or Neptune or 12th house, but for now, it should be fine. <laughs> Alrighty guys, thank you all for watching and if this video resonated with you, please leave your comment down below. I would love to hear that, but if it didn't, I would love to hear your interpretations and thank you so very much and I will see you in my next video. Bye y'all.